I hear so much about hamburgers from you. Do you like hot dogs? I like dogs. I like, well, I like hot dogs. I'm not going to shorten it because everybody knows I like dogs, <laughs> the furry kind. But I, I like hot dogs. I actually, to be honest, I like a good, either a smoked sausage or a Polska kielbasa or a or a an andouille sausage or some of those Johnsonvilles on a bun rather than just your standard hot dog. I, I, I always think of well, I'll, I used to eat hot dogs a bunch at buildings at arenas. You know, standard if you hadn't had anything to eat, I, I didn't have to be on a healthy diet, so I would go to the concession stand and that was where I'd have dinner a lot of times. You know, we had odd hours and you know, the double shots on Sunday. You're grabbing what you can get. But I'd be chowing down on a hot dog, and Stan Lane would look at me like I had – I was just chewing on a steaming turd. <laughs> because, well, more than being healthy and a, and a you know a bodybuilder and, you know, athlete, Stan had certain phobias. He had, he had a phobia uh, – he had phobia about the police. He didn't want any interactions with the police, and he rather than make an illegal U-turn if we were lost, he'd drive two miles. But rather than do anything screwy, because he thought that there was a – satellite uh, keeping track of that motherfucker Stan Lane down there in, in North Carolina. Just, they were waiting for him to fuck up. They'd see it as soon as he did. So he, no, they were only waiting for him to go to Florida. Well, I think, yeah. <laughs> and some of his phobias may have, have proven to be uh, somewhat, <laughs> but, and there was another thing. And, and at one time he actually, he had a wonderful photo album because Stan was quite the photographer during his days on the road and had a wonderful photo album of many of his friends that he had, met and cavorted with over the years and and he got to worry in one night because some of them looked too young even though they weren't ladies and gentlemen he but on on appearances he thought uh, this is where his mind went he thought what if the cops were to suddenly come even though he's done nothing wrong and he's sitting in his own home if the cops came to my home and then they searched and they found these pictures and then they'd think that these people were underage and then i'd go to jail so he threw his photo album out he just it, it it and and one of the things and he was careful about what he would eat also and he would always point to a hot dog or a, a sausage or something like that that you'd bit into and he'd go look at all those those gimmicks in there <laughs> he'd say gimmicks in there you know the little pieces of the obviously gristle or whatever that's why the phrase came about we don't want to know how the sausage is made but they taste good but he'd look at all those gimmicks in there right and he didn't want to eat it grossed him out bad. So as a matter of fact, what he would eat, sometimes you, you could give him a a suggestion. One of the ribs of Midnight Express car ribs that we played on each other was it's late at night. Have I told you the 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 uh, the uh, the pork rind rib where, where Bobby was slipped the pork rind and Stan thought that he'd eaten a, a goddamn, you know, fried rat because we put that suggestion in his mind. He 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 was susceptible to suggestions, but he could do that also. I.e. the lots of ants rib where he had spent 50 miles in the car talking about how he hated summer because all the bugs and the ants and the spiders and then talked about the ants in the in the dugout that he saw where I had been dressing at the outdoor show that night. And then he'd thrown the plastic ants on me. I was already thinking about ants. He did everything but bring up the movie Them with James Arness. So I was thinking about you would plant those hypnotic suggestions in in people and then you would rib them and it had more impact that way you obviously ate whatever you wanted bobby did noticeably get pump in the later half of the 80s yeah when you when you're on the road what is stan eating i mean if he's riding with you guys and you guys are not adhering to the same diet as him like what was his eating habit well and, and by the way bobby did, bobby did get plump because that's the time the schedule just went insane and then we were on crockett's plane and where and i was bringing in you know, of uh, uh, Bojangles chicken and biscuits on the plane or whatever the fuck, or we get, you know, uh, uh, Sabatinos from uh, Baltimore before we left. But finally, Bobby did <laughs> go on. Because also, once that he got, I think it was the Fantastics program. It was, it, that wore the weight off of him. I mean, those guys were going up and down. But Stan, that was the thing because of his genetics. He could eat anything. I mean, he wasn't like he wasn't eating the triple cheese and the extra fries and everything like me. He'd have a baked potato or he'd have a grilled chicken sandwich or whatever. But he didn't go out of his way. Stan, his whole family's genetics. His father was ninety something when he passed. Looked like he was still in his sixties. His mother, I believe, is nine. I don't ninety something. Nobody knows really how old Stan is. He doesn't look it. Um, 
so he, but he could get away with a lot of shit that, that, you know, other guys couldn't get away with. But then, then there, Luger was just, those guys like Luger and Sting, plus they were making, you know, big money, but they would go out of their way to go to sit down restaurants and, you know, order the, the stuff that when they could find them and order the stuff that was healthy and et cetera, et cetera. And we'd just go to the drive through and get the fuck home. And, but Stan was ahead of all of them. 